Hey, ladies as well as gentlemen, Papa Boris here, playing some more Pathfinder. This is a really great scenario, Foul Misgivings. It's one of the most uh, famous or perhaps infamous scenarios in the game. So we're going to have to do a lot of talking here to explain how it works. Uh, the last scenario was a bit of a filler. This one is definitely not. It's a really, really cool one. It's quite challenging. Let's go ahead and talk about how the mechanics work. And, and there's some really good story here, so you should, again, you should definitely take a check it out. So basically, um, I'm not even going to talk about this right now. Um, the villain's pretty normal. If you fight him alone, he's harder, and he's got two difficult combat checks. What's interesting is not the villain, is the henchman. So the henchman um, cannot be evaded, and they don't have a check to defeat. The check to defeat is none. So you automatically defeat them, and then you proceed to try to close your location. But whenever you defeat a haunt, it goes in front of you, and for the rest of the scenario, the difficulty of every single one of your checks is increased by one. So with all these haunts, you know, as people, more and more people find haunts, everybody kind of has a harder and harder time getting shit done. But on top of that, there is this scenario rule, which is that whenever you encounter a haunt, not only does its normal thing happen, but on top of that, you roll a d6, and you add x, where x is the number of haunts in front of all characters. So x is always going to be at least one, because you, the one that you just found. And then, if the result is five or higher, you encounter this villain called Aisha Foxglove. And I think I can take you to the vault and show you her. I think I can check out the box like that. Let's see, if we check out deck two villains, yep, there she is, Aisha Foxglove. So, let me explain that again, because it's a bit confusing. There have been a lot of questions in the forums. I remember when this game came out, people were asking how, what the hell this means. So, let's say that uh, Amiri finds a haunt. So X is now X, the number of haunts in front of all players, is now 1. She would roll a d6 and add 1, and if the result is 5 or higher, she'd encounter Aisha Foxglove. Um, so basically, the first time someone encounters a haunt, then on a roll of 4 or higher, Aisha Foxglove happens. The next time someone encounters a, a haunt, it's a roll of 3 or higher, then 2 or higher, and then it's guaranteed from that point on. So, she is actually um, not that impressive when you first look at her. So, I was like, okay, no magic check. She's not defeated. Fine. If defeated, a bunch of crap, and you get to, you know, do some scouting. So, seems pretty normal, right? Well, check out the defeat box. Charisma, Diplomacy, Divine. There's no combat here. She cannot be defeated with a combat check. So, she's actually really hard to defeat. In fact, of the 11 characters in the game, literally only one character can actually defeat her, and that's Kira the Cleric. The reason for that is that you actually can't really get the magic trait onto a non-combat check in this game very easily, if at all, ever. So you can make like a Divine 13 or a Charisma 13, but it's not going to have the magic trait on it unless you're Kira the Cleric, who gets to add the magic trait and a d8 to her checks against the undead. Not just combat checks, but all checks. So because Aisha is undead, Kira gets that d8 and the magic check, and Kira can succeed. Everyone else is just trying not to take damage. So just because it's not a combat check doesn't mean you don't take damage if you fail. You always take damage if you fail against monsters, regardless of the type of check that you tried. So when you pick up a haunt and encounter her, you're going to have at least a 14 difficulty divine charisma or diplomacy check. So this is actually kind of hard to do. So you have to plan very carefully. Um, the best way to beat her is, of course, to be Kira. Second best is to be Mauricial. Mauricial can evade her. Um, and then anyone else, you, you pretty much um, need to have armor so that you can bury the armor to undo the damage that she does. So all your armor characters need to hang on to their armor. That leaves, in this case, in our, in our party, Linny and Ezrin. Linny can make a divine check. Um, she's pretty good at divine, and she's got her animal companion adding a d4 plus 2, so Linny's fine. But Ezrin is really vulnerable. He's rolling charisma which is a d6 to try to hit a 14, he's probably getting hand-wiped whenever he encounters Aisha Foxglove. So you may want to have somebody pass off an armor to Ezrin for him to lug around during the scenario, just so he can, pre prepare, he can be prepared for this shit. And again, it's not guaranteed. You roll a d6 and add x, where x is the number of haunts in front of the players. Um, so it's always at least one, but as much as, you know, possibly as much as seven. Um, and then if the result is five or higher, only then do you encounter her. So for Ezrin, you either have to get lucky, suffer a hand wipe or have somebody give him an armor. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start Ezrin at the academy because that's his jam, but I'm also going to put Sila there and Amiri there because I really would like Sila to give her starting armor to Ezrin and hopefully she can draw an armor before she encounters Aisha Foxglove herself. This scenario, for good measure, as if it wasn't bitch enough, also has the Warrens. 
Um, it's got the deeper dungeons. It's got the desecrated vaults. It's got some pretty tough locations. It's, it, and, and the farmhouse. Lots and lots of fighting going on here. But there is one interesting location here. A new location. Foxglove Manor. Look at the at this location text. Reveal the ally Alder and Foxglove to banish all haunts in front of the characters. Woo! So that's kind of the saving grace here. Um, you get to, if you kept Alder and Fox, Foxglove, the useless asshole, in your party this entire time, from way back when you got him in uh, Scenario 1.2, then you get to make this scenario a whole lot easier. So it's metagaming. If I had really wanted a super challenge, I would not have kept him, because he's obviously crappy. Uh, and then this scenario would be a lot harder. But, you know, if we're trying to maximize our odds of success, I hope you see now that keeping him around in Harsk's deck this whole time was worth it. Speaking of Harsk, let's put him in the deeper dungeons. He's good at, he's the only one who's really good at closing them. Lindy will go to the cave. She's good at closing that. Marizio will go to the prison. Hopefully I find my crown of charisma before I um, uh, encounter the henchman there. And that I think that'll do it. That'll do it. So having Stilo start in the academy kind of sucks because she's just pretty likely to turn over a spell, which Ezrin could have picked up and gotten a free exploration anyhow, but whatever. I think it's worth it to give Ezrin an armor. All right, Amiri has two weapons. Stila has a weapon. No need to pass off a weapon. Amiri's going to go to her favorite place, the farmhouse, I think. Which has monsters and then more monsters. And then to close the location, you have monsters. There's a bugbear. All right, we'll do glide. Should I bury my spear? Yeah, I'm just going to bury it. Just, I just really just don't even want it. I, not that I'm concerned about not making the check. I just really don't want that spear. Because I already have the much better glive. Troubadour does not help me close this place, so I'm going to discard it to explore. Chime of bullshit can go suck itself. And yeah, I'll discard one blessing, I think, to explore again. Haunt. All right, I got armor. I am ready for Aisha Fox. So remember, don't recharge your armors, people. And, then, and this, well, listen, by the way, I highly recommend reading the stories, because like each, each haunt does a unique thing. So am I going to have to bust my armor? I am not, so uh, I didn't roll five. That's good. Well, I guess that's a good thing, because if I had buried the armor against Aisha, I would have lost my glive and had to fight this guy barehanded. Not that I couldn't take it, mind you. But, uh, you know, it's just convenient not to have to deal with that. All right, do not get rid of the armor here, because you need to hang on to it. Everybody's going to be finding those damned henchmen. Um, we'll get rid of the dagger. And, um, all right, so turn one, one location closed. Pretty good deal. Let's draw some more cards here, and should I? No, I, I want Sila to be at the academy to give an armor to Ezra, and I asked the whole reason I put her there. So let's scout, just in case it's like a monster or something. It is a monster. It's actually pretty good. So Ezra will fight the monster, then get an extra exploration, because his first exploration at the academy wasn't a spell. I'm going to give him this elven breastplate, and then I'm going to move to where she actually wants to be, which is the desecrated vault. She's not the best at closing that place, but she's pretty good. War Chanter. Ugh, okay. So we have to make a Wisdom 8 check or we can't play weapons. Um, I'll peel a card to, to give myself slightly better odds at this. Why is it a combat check? What? 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 Okay. Well, that that card, the Goblin War Chanter, was um, really, really bugged in the closed beta. And clearly, it hasn't been fixed yet. It was only supposed to be Sila who makes that check. Um, I don't know why everybody's going around the horn making this check. Pretty sure it's not how it's supposed to work. And also, the check turned into combat or something. Oh, not now it's combat? And the, and the card isn't even being shown anymore. All right, well, whatever. <laughs> it's an easy kill with the greatsword. Hopefully this is actually working. Okay, I think I think I think that worked. I think that actually worked the way it was supposed to. Let's go again. Haunt. All right. Oh my god, I lost my armor. Uh oh. Well, butterscotch candy. Um, shit. I yeah, I think I made the right call giving the armor to Ezrin. I think I did, but it's just kind of unfortunate that this happened. Oh what? It can be undefeated even though it's auto defeated. That's weird. Okay, now. We're rolling again? Really? We're rolling twice. Why are we rolling twice? Well, okay. Um, wait a minute. Th there was supposed to be a roll for fighting Aisha. 
or was that the role? Was that the role? It said uh, it was like role on a one that's undefeated. Okay, a little bit, little bit, bugaroo Bugaroony booty. Um, anyway, we've got to roll a five on these three. That should be fine, unless some more crazy shit happens. So, I don't know exactly what all happened there. Do I even have a haunt in front of me? Yeah, I do. I, it, I have a haunt in front of me. So, I think, I think everything just looked a little wacky, but it actually all worked out. I got a haunt in front of me. My checks are all harder. I did close the vault. So, two turns. Two locations closed. I'm actually 100% successful here at closing locations in one turn, so... Oh, there's that, there's that uh, failed cure check again. So that's three times now that I can show the results. Maybe, maybe it's when you use cure at a, um, what's her face? Maybe it's when you, when you use cure at a location that is closed. Is that, is that like what's causing the problem? Okay, so I could use quarter staff and strength to kill this guy if I wanted to, but I don't really see the need to hang on to my spell here. Harsk has plenty of arrows to shoot. And I should note that Blessing of Yabba Dabba Doo is currently rechargeable, which Harsk is holding onto one of them, so that would be a good thing to use if Ezrin finds a spell here and he needs to secure the pickup. So free explore for it not being a spell. Guidance. Okay, I'm not going to pick that up because it's not a spell and I can't. Luckily, well, hmm, I have a 1 in 8 chance of failing this. Which would suck, because I'd lose an extra exploration. So I could guarantee it by playing Harsk's Yabba Dabba Doo. But no, I'll take my 87.5% chance. I oh, shouldn't have been greedy. Damn. Damn it. All right, well, that's life. I, I, I haven't used Augury. Should I have maybe used Augury there? Oh, God. Fuck. All right, well, I guess we're just going to do this. I'm not super thrilled about it, but... Okay, I cannot make that recharge spell. I'm not sure why I even tried... Um, yeah, I'm gonna lose the medallion and a blessing, unfortunately. Okay, let's recharge a blessing. I need a seven on those three dice. I should be fine. Crap. One in eight chance of failure. Should have really just played Yabba Dabba Doo. Well. Um, yeah, why not? We're on a roll here. Let's just keep on going. Standard bear. All right, so it's really nice when you have masterwork tools because you can reveal them for two extra dice to your disable checks, and you can use a disable eight check to pick up any boon at this location, so you're just, like, pretty much guaranteed to pick up any boon you find. And it's a little risky, but I will explore again. If I have to play a bunch of blessings to close this, then, well, that's what I'm going to do. Didn't find my crown of charisma in time, alas. So now I need to find Aldrin Hawksglove. Hawksglove? Foxglove. With... Harsk, so I can get rid of all these haunts in front of everybody. It's not that I care so much about encountering Aisha. I mean, although that's a problem for anyone but Marizial. But um, I really also don't want to ha have, like, a penalty to all my checks. I don't have a charisma check for anybody, which is unfortunate. So we're going to have to play three blessings here. It's kind of sucky to play that many blessings. But I really want to really close this place. I don't want to fail this check. And I might have actually failed if I had rolled the one, two, three there. So, um, Harsk needs to try to burn through his hand as quickly as possible and, um, find Aldern so that he can go to Foxglove Manor and, uh, get rid of all these haunts that are tripping everybody up. Okay, so Linny has, wow, she is ready to deal some damage. Holy shit. Ah, uh, boy. Do I discard my toad to explore again? Well, technically it's just a recharge. Yeah. Yeah, we got more animals in the deck. I need to use these inflicts up. This is, well, this is maybe an indication that I shouldn't have three inflicts in my deck, although how often is this going to happen? I'm actually just going to discard one of them because I really just want to find another animal now. Didn't happen. All right, a little scary. So um, into the deeper dungeons we go. Nice, it's an undead. I need a six on those 3d8s. Should be good. Do I discard the Blessing of Lamash 2 to explore again? No. We'll just draw a few cards and hopefully get Mr. Foxglove. Okay, well, it's a haunt, so good to know that, I guess. Um, hmm. Didn't find Mr. Foxglove. I could have a Miri go do it, but she's not holding an armor, so I think it's a bit foolhardy. Oh, God, there's actually not that many open locations left. I guess we could just do... Ah, Foxglove Manor is an Arcane 8. That's not the greatest. Uh-oh. All right. I guess she's going into the treacherous cave. She's pretty good at closing survival. 
Um, so, yeah. She's just gonna bum around in here. Somebody will need to play a blessing to help her out, but, uh, that's fine. Alright, thank you, Thieves Tools, for not making me get stuck under a collapsed ceiling. And I'm not gonna go crazy, I'm not going to, um, play the Blessing of Aristotle for an extra explore. Oh, shoot, I actually can't, uh, I can't necessarily move her out. I have to succeed at a Constitution or Fortitude 6 check to move away from here. That, this, I made a huge mistake. I really needed to be able to get over to the Warrens in order to, um be able to scout it out like I normally do with Sela. So this is foolish. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna burn cards just to get out of here, but I'm missing out on, on some opportunities. Okay, I don't actually wanna pull Sela in either, even though, shoot, I'm really wasting scouting. If I go in here, she gets to scout it up. I'm gonna do it. It sucks. Um, I don't wanna miss opportunities for these extra explorations. Okay, there's a haunt, great. Well, she's got the armor. She's okay at wisdom survival. So I guess we're doing it. Because I want everybody out of this stupid, treacherous cave and onto better, greener pastures. Okay, so, um, man. Harsk needs to find Alder and Foxglove Esperanto here, because right now we're we're at the point where we're guaranteed to be fighting Aisha every single time. Plus, uh, people are suffering some big penalties to their checks. It'd be hilarious if I actually beat this without ever finding Mr. Foxglove. So I kept him around this whole time. Um, all for nothing. And again, I'm not even trying this check because I cannot succeed because I cannot get the magic trait on it. And I will bury my magic chainmail to block all of her damage. And then now we got to close. So I'm at a penalty of plus two. I'm trying to close this place. Anybody got a wisdom blessing? Nope. 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 And of course, nope. Nobody has the blessing that is rechargeable at the moment either. So I'm going to have Harsk maybe. Ah, I hate this. But I'll have him play a Blessing just so that he recharges more cards and she'll play a Blessing. So four cards, four dice, 3d8 and a d6 to hit a 9. A little risky, actually. But luckily I didn't have horrendous luck there. And now everybody is free to leave the Treacherous Cave. All right, so Ezrin, meanwhile, is like, Oh, I'm at the Academy here, guys. Uh, yeah. Nobody has the right type of Blessing that it was rechargeable at the moment. So I'm not going to spend re uh, resources here. We'll just roll the die. And get lucky this time. Very good. So that's nice. It'll give me an extra chance to scout after my spell train runs out. Detect magic. Very good to see. It's an auto pickup, so I get a free exploration, and then it's likely to find another spell for me. Grizzled Mercenary. Don't care about. So we'll just fail the roll on that one, and then we'll do detect magic. Remember, though. Actually, hang on. Detect magic. Um, yeah, we'll do it. It's fine. Let's see what happens here. Sanctuary. Well, this is pretty crappy. And even if I pick it up, I'm not getting an extra exploration, because because this is an encounter, it is not an exploration, so Ezrin's ability does not trigger on this. And I think we'll just skip the expanded spell book, I've already got a huge hand, so I don't care about picking up the Sanctuary, it's a garbage spell anyway. Okay, of course I pick it up. What I'm going to do now, though, is uh, let's just do Detect Evil, see what the hell's in here. It's a Ring of Protection, interesting. So, if I picked it up, I would get an extra explore, but it's Constitution, Fortitude, 5. So I could go for an augury. There's a 66% chance that I will find the henchman or the villain. No. What I'd rather do is pick up, the, or basically fail to pick up the ring on my next explore, and then have a guaranteed augury in case the villain is in that location. Okay. So Marizial. Ah, oh boy. God, this sucks. She doesn't really want to go to the manor because she sucks at closing it. She doesn't want to go here because she sucks at closing that. So she's going to the Warrens. We're going to lose a couple of turns from finding monsters in the Warrens. But right now, I'm still on turn 20. Like, I've only spent 10 turns and I've already, like, closed half the locations. So it really doesn't even matter that much if extra monsters do appear in the top of locations. I guess it'd be kind of annoying if it happened in the Academy, but I'll take it. It's not the end of the world. All right, so we're not fighting any monsters yet. <laughs> Great. Good old superior longsword. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna keep the longsword, and I will recharge the armor, because she can evade the foxglove lady. It's not a big deal. Alright, Linny, ah, uh, boy. What the hell is she doing with her life? She can go pick up the Ring of Protection. You know what? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna pick up the Ring of Protection with Linny, because it is a good item. I, I will totally keep this thing. It's, oh, I don't have an animal! No, oh, I forgot I don't have an animal. Well, 50-50 odds. I mean, I don't, I'm not that torn up about it, 
it, it is a nice one. It like it like blocks enchantresses and stuff. I'm not gonna explore again because I would much rather um, just do the augury to see what's there. So yeah, we would have actually found the blacksmith's son. Oh, interesting. You know what? I, sh I should have actually called spell maybe on it. No, no, it was good to put the monster on top. Toxic cloud is really good though. Shit. Um, fuck. Yeah, there's no way. Uh, there's no way to get that Toxic Cloud. It's a good spell, but I can't get it and not that bothered about it. So, um, yeah. I guess um, Ezrin will take out the Haunt on his turn and close the location. He is the most well-equipped to do so. And you know what? She's just going to discard another one of these Inflicts because I really don't think she's going to have enough time to use them. All right, there's an animal, finally. Okay, what's here? It's a Haunt. Hmm. Okay. Well, he's got an armor. Might as well close this place, I guess. So, this is going pretty well, actually. Everybody's haunted to the dickens, but... Um, we've closed most of the locations. Really, really narrow range of possibilities for where the villain might be. I am guaranteed to fight Aisha. And Harsk is really, really bad at this. His he's rolling a d4 for charisma. Luckily, armor will just block everything. Now, I do need to spend a blessing or two to close this place. Luckily, we still have a lot of blessings. Any constitution blessings? Nope. Okay. Guess we'll do that one. And let's just be safe. Let's just do whatever. Another one. You know, Harsk should have used his own blessings so that uh, he could have maximized his odds of picking up Alder and Foxglove. Okay, I really just want to get him. I think at this point I don't even need him to win because things have been going so well. But, ah. Uh, so annoying. I, I'm gonna get rid of this crossbow. Come on. Come 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 here, boy. There you go. That a boy. Uh okay, so the villain's either in the Warrens or in Fox Club Manor. Amiri's not good at closing either location. There's only a one in ten chance of finding the villain here though, so I guess this is where I'm gonna go. Ambush. Um hmm. So I could play the blessing of Yabba Dabba Doo. And roll 3d6. Yeah, no, F it. It's not even worth it. We'll just, um, hello? Roll the die. Thank you. We're going to just fail this check and then fight a monster. Hopefully not the henchman slash villain, although there was a 1 in 3 chance of that, which would have been which would have been bad. Luckily, it didn't happen, so we get rid of two cards of exploration. We get rid of the ambush itself, and of course, we're also getting rid of uh, one of the monsters inside. Um, do I want to shoot an arrow here? Yeah, we don't have any charisma locations, so... That seems fine. That was actually kind of close. But we got rid of it. I'm not going to explore again. Let's just end the turn here. And I think... Yeah, I think I'm going to drag Sila over here. To see what's coming up. Bracers get moved out. Um, Let me think. Does she want to explore? Yes, because we can temp close, Ezrin can temp close the Academy, Marizio can temp close the Warren. So yeah, this is actually fine. If the villain's in here, which I don't know, the villain might be in the Warrens, it's like a 50-50 situation right now, um, then I'm totally happy with that. Okay, uh, I don't need to keep exploring. I've got 16 turns left and only like 15 cards to get through, so I don't really see any particular reason to go fast. We can just take our time and look we get a free exploration anyhow so this is all fine and good Ezrin all right so Ezrin has the armor um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that and even with the haunting well someone should really play a blessing on him because this is it's not a it's not a guaranteed close because of the haunted plus one. Although, wait a minute, if I actually fail the closing requirement, if I... Oh, no! Oh, my God, I totally forgot about this. Um, yeah, this is actually stupid, because I am banishing it, because I don't have heavy armor proficiency. So, the Elven Breastplate is banished, so we lost it forever. That's actually kind of shitty to lose an Elven Breastplate. That's her best armor. Well, the alternative was to wipe my hand, and I don't have to close the location. Oh, yeah, it's optional. You know what? F it! No, I'm not going to close it. Let's explore again. I want to get the Toxic Cloud and then close. And this worked out pretty well because I had the Thieves' Tool, so I get an exploration off the Blacksmith's Sun. There we go. All right, so we're going to play a Blessing. we got 
ass tons of blessings here. We are not in any kind of trouble. I would like to pick this up, and now I can close the location because it's the end of my turn. Um, should I play a blessing? Sure. Yeah, we got plenty of blessings. We're drowning in them, basically. So let's make sure this place closes. Okay, so now 50-50, it's either the villains either in the um, Warrens or in the Foxglove Manor. And I guess... Uh, so if she finds a monster that puts an extra thing on top of the Foxglove Manor, yeah, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Skin Saw Ritual. All right, this kind of sucks. So she has to encounter a Skin Saw Cultist, which puts another card on top of Foxglove Manor. Um, all right, we will not be needing the Cloak of Elven Kind, though. Tarsk has some stuff he can shoot for sure. So that was a barrier that made me fight a monster, which sucks. So there's still the monsters left in the deck. And no rush. We'll just take it slow here. Okay, Linny, let's go to Foxglove Manor. With a blessing, she should be able to close this place if necessary. Bunyip! Yay! Bunyip! Oh, he's so cute! Oh, look at his, look at his cute whiskers! Okay, um, so we're using one of our Inflicts. I've discarded the other two voluntarily. Let's get rid of this Bunyip. And I could explore again, but now that I don't have any more Inflicts, I'm not that excited about the prospect. Oh, man, I really... Uh, should I have just maybe hand-wiped Ezrin instead of banishing that that Breastplate? I probably had enough leeway to do so. Right, who needs the most healing? She's got four cards and six. Ooh, Amiri's only got three cards left in her deck. So I think Amiri's the best healing target here. Yeah, alright, I've been rolling some good fours lately. I guess, in the end, statistics always triumphs. Cure is almost an auto-recharge. I only fail on Snake Eyes, which is a 1 in 40 chance. No need to explore again. Got Augury, which might be nice. Okay, this is going to feel so good. Oh boy, this is going to feel so good. Oh my god, I can't wait for this. Ah, oh, worth it. All right, if I find the villain, am I going to be pissed? No, I can take out the villain. It's fine. Didn't find the villain. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Somebody's calling me. What the heck? All right. Um. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Okay. Sorry, Psyche. I'll call you back later. You know what? Fuck you, Alder and Foxglove. Pew! You give me that potion of fortitude. Give it to me now. All right, let's scout at the bottom here. We have a werewolf tough fight. So still not the villain or the henchman. Amiri is well equipped to take out this thing. Let's reveal it. Let's banish, or sorry, bury my glive. Need to roll an eight on this. It's a bit dicey. Does Ezra have strength? Yeah, this is good. I could also use toxic cloud, I guess. You know, that, that would have been smarter. I think the villain is undead, so... Yeah, the villain's definitely undead, so Toxic Cloud won't work on him. Toxic Cloud... Let me actually show you. I've not I showed you Toxic Cloud. Shame on me. Toxic Cloud, basically, you can display it, and then it adds a d6 to everybody's combat checks for the rest of the turn. The problem is it also adds the poison trait, so it doesn't apply to any monsters that are immune to poison, which includes, uh, like, all undead, which is the problem. So anyway, and that's the Toxic Cloud. But uh, I, I could have used it there. I chose not to, and that was probably a mistake because um, she could have, uh, Ezrin could have saved the strength for um, fighting the villain. Instead, we're going to have Toxic Cloud against the villain, which will not work. Okay, that was a really roundabout way of expressing what should have been a very simple thought. But anyway, seal is up. Can we find the villain here? Nope, we found another crappy spell. Okay, so I'm really hoping the villain is in here because that will mean that it ends earlier. All right, thank goodness. So if this had been a henchman, it would have been difficult to close the location. And on top of that, because is really dumb. And on top of that, we still would have had to go through the Warrens to um, close the, to finish this off. I would have had the time to do it. I was fine, but this way is just faster. Okay, so we've got a Troubadour, which actually guarantees success. I cannot fail that. Thanks to my amazing dexterousness. And now combat. Well, um, let's keep this simple. So we'll do the first check ourselves. Let's discard the greatsword. Let's throw away a card there. Let's play a blessing. Does anybody have two blessings? She does. 
so might as well play one. And I don't really see myself failing that check. The dice only had to roll a 10, so it was theoretically possible to fail, but not very likely. And let's just pass some of the fun around here. Let's take a Miri for a spin. We'll discard a Bastard Sword. Glibness. I'll glib you. Let's bury that, because the Blessing of Lemish 2 is the top blessing. Let's just play more Blessings in case anything wacky happens. Ooh, I can recharge a Blessing of Lemish. No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bury it. Okay. So, yeah, that, that should be fine. So if that had, you know, if that had been a henchman, it would have been annoying. I would have had to spend those blessings just to close the location. Um, and then I we still would have to go through the warren, so it was nice to get a quicker finish here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, as you are wont to do. And now it's time for our rewards, which is a skill feat. So nothing wacky going on here. Just uh, putting everybody's skill feats into their combat stat. It's simple, but I think for Rise of the Rune Lords, it makes sense. And now, I really regret that I don't have that elven breastplate anymore. Oh, man. This is going to be sad. So, Ezrin picked up a bunch of spells. Hmm, this is um, a little tricky. So, obviously, Sanctuary, Detect Magic. I need to discard another spell. I do like Agility. It's nice to have, but I don't think I can afford to get rid of another combat spell. I could get rid of Invisibility. Let's see, I got Lightning Touch, Frost Ray, Scorching Ray, Acid Arrow. Yeah, I can't get rid of a combat spell. I'd be going down to three at that point, just to keep a pretty marginal thing. I mean, I could keep it instead of Toxic Cloud. I really like it. You know, I just like it. I don't care if it's, like, not even the best choice. I'll keep it. We'll decide later what to do about it. So, Marizial has some junk. Harsk has some junk. He actually needs an ally. All right. So, Sila needs an armor, and Ezrin needs to get rid of a spell. What, are the, what spells does Linny have? Can she help me? You know what? Let's get rid of one of these Inflex. We've had way too many of them. So, you can take the Agility, because that is both Arcane and Divine. There. Let's do a quick view all. Not missing anything. Didn't pick up many boons that time. And so, Sila is getting a regular Chainmail in place of an Elven Breastplate, which is sad. But it helped make the scenario easier, and at the end of the day, it's just an armor. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe. And of course, I'll see you again soon. Takeity, talkity, tookity, care.